So, Sayano Uta is a... Uh, what? Okay, sorry. Sayano Uta is a visual novel of the... Oh, serious? Sayano Uta is... Oh, oh, hey, mom, this isn't what... Okay, that joke's done. But in all seriousness, I'm pretty torn about how to review this game. Like, yeah, you've probably heard other millions of people on the internet call Saya the most fucked up game ever. But it's seriously impossible to discuss Saya without discussing its various transgressions. So, here's a pretty unambiguous warning. Sayano Uta is a piece of media that was designed to upset you. If you are sensitive to disturbing imagery, do not play this game. If you have a light stomach, do not play this game. If you have difficulty getting through scenes involving sexual assault, underage sex, or sexual slavery, do not play Saya. This is an experience that starts with the discomfort knob turned to 11 and keeps cranking it till the end. If any of what I just described sounded like something that you might not be able to handle, seriously, don't play this game. Don't be embarrassed, this game is seriously not for everyone. Alright, are they gone? Yeah? Anyone left? No? Right. Now here's a really quick rundown of the game's plot. College student Fuminori Sakisada, the pronunciation, whatever, gets in a car accident that kills his family and leaves his brain a little bit scrambled. Waking up from his, like, life-saving brain surgery, he finds that he now sees the world as this disgusting, fleshy hellscape of a, a vision, and, like, the walls and floors are made of, like, organs and innards, and humans look like these gross cenobite monsters, and everything smells like shit. And just when he's gonna end it all, he befriends a mysterious little girl named Saya, who he miraculously sees as a normal human. Hmm. He sees normal humans as monsters, and he sees this girl as a normal human. Now, it's not hard to figure out where this thing is going, but the tension between the joy she provides him and the reality of her true form does provide a skin-crawly basis for the game's horror. And skin crawly it does get. Now as a rule, I'm pretty okay with art being transgressive and pushing boundaries as long as it has a point. And I'm not gonna say that Sai doesn't have a point. I mean, as far as messages go, it doesn't say anything that HP Lovecraft didn't say a hundred years ago, but we'll get to that later. The fact of the matter is, as a piece of horror, its suspense is amplified by the knowledge that this game is willing to fucking go there. Typically in a horror game, the horror stops when the death cutscene starts, because I mean, like, it's out of your hands, whatever. In Saya, however, that's not the case. You're seriously terrified that something bad is going to happen, because when it does, you're gonna be subjected to the veil to that for like five minutes, and you're gonna have to click through it yourself, and what if your mom comes in? I mean, you downloaded this game onto your desktop for the resolution, but the monitor faces the door. So yeah, as far as suspense goes, the fucked up parts of this game are, are worth having there. And honestly, that's what simultaneously surprised and disappointed me about this game. Well, at the beginning, it seemed like it was going to be a character study of a man who had passed beyond the boundary of insanity. It quickly reveals itself to be a much more classical horror story. Not that the character study stuff isn't there, it's just not what the game ends up finding the most interesting. At around the halfway point of the game, the main character becomes just a little too villainy for the whole I mean, do you blame him for doing what he's doing? Thing to work? And it becomes a straight up horror game. Now this is compounded by how straight Saya plays its Lovecraft, and you're left with a pretty well executed piece of suspense, but not that much more. I mean, it's weird because it starts the pretty original premise, at least as far as the whole Saya relationship goes, but once the rogue scientist starts going through the papers of a madman and looking at mysterious hexes through the viewfinder of a camera to avoid eye contact, it becomes less interesting, not more, at least to me. Finally, and I know that some people will be upset that I even brought this up, but the game has some pretty gratuitous sex scenes. Like, look, I get that it's important that Saya provides Fuminori with, like, the only physical pleasure that he can experience, but the actual sex scenes themselves are far too detailed and fetishistic to pretend that someone somewhere isn't getting off to them. I mean, it, it just feels tacked on and very tacky, and this goes doubly for the rape scenes. I mean, like, they're just kind of... <sighs> Wow, that's a lot of negativity. I guess that just goes with the territory when you make a visual novel that's this out there and has tonal shifts as strong as this one does. That being said, I can't help but recommend this to anyone who can look past its grotesque nature. That's because, in spite and partially because of the depths this game is willing to plunge, it's just a compelling piece of horror. I mean, every scene is you covering your face but peeking between your fingers. It's gonna upset you, and it's gonna disturb you, but you're gonna have trouble putting it down. So, 
Just glimmers out of the way. Do play Saya. I mean, it's a serious fucking trick. 